Yes. Good morning. Uh, we have uh, a single session here uh, today. And uh, it's quite funny because uh, my name is Walter and uh, our presenter's name is also Walter. So uh, um, that makes uh, introductions uh, quite easy. Uh, uh, Walter will be, that, that's so weird. Yes, saying, Walter, saying you'll be your saying name. your own name. Yeah, you're saying your own name now. <laughs> anyway, uh, Walter will be talking about Ansible and, uh, and Terraform. So uh, have fun. Cool. Thank you for the introduction. So thank you, everyone, for coming today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone awake. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's having a good time so far? Yeah. Yes, yes, excellent. Okay, well, thank you for coming. Uh, I will start out by saying, uh, admittingly, that this is a talk that was not originally prepared by me. Um, I'm actually delivering this in, in place of someone else. Uh, Tim Abno, if anyone here knows Tim. Um, he's the one who usually loves to deliver these uh, talks and conversations. Um, uh, I get to be the Tim for today. Uh, I'm going to try and live up to his uh, expectations, and if I don't, Tell me later, um, and just do it nicely, not too harsh. I am a New Yorker by nature. I, that was where I was born and raised. So I'm used to people saying mean things to me, but you know, I, I, I would like it not today. Not today, please. So we're giving credit to the people who actually put this information together. I'm going to do my best to answer as many questions that you have, and hopefully you will have many, many questions. Um, I'm kidding. Um, and if I can't answer your question today, I will get you an answer. That's the key, right, is I will get you an answer. Okay, so I'll jump right in. My name is Walter Bentley. Um, I am the Community uh, Strategy Director for uh, Red Hat for the Ansible Business Unit. This is a brand new role for me. Um, so some of you may know me as the new Robin or uh, the new Greg, uh, but um, you know, those are big shoes to fill and I'm learning. So you have to give me some time, but I will get there, right? But that is my new role that I just took on the beginning of the year. Um, I'd like to uh, put some things about me just so you can get to know me as well as I hopefully next today, and maybe tomorrow I'll get to know many of you as well. Um, I am a avid cigar smoker uh, to the point where during COVID, um, because all the places were closed um, and I don't like smoking outside when it's below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, I built a cigar room in my house. Now, mind you, I had to barter with my wife. I had to renovate our, our kitchen in order to get my cigar room. Um, so you, you may think of she really won and I didn't win, but I, I still figure out the way that I won out of that deal. Um, as well as uh, I have a lot of hobbies. I'm a certified firearm instructor, and that's a picture that you see there. I was holding a, uh, a weekend uh, workshop, uh, working with some people, helping sh making sure that firearm use is done safely and properly. Um, and as well as I DJ in the part-time. So I have a lot of part-time jobs, but that's me. These are my hobbies. These are the things I like to do. Um, and these are some of the organizations that I work for. The organizations up is that I am a hardcore old school ops guy. Uh, I am the dude who used to get called 2 a.m. to fix problems. Um, the ones that were on these uh, emergency calls when things would go down. That's what I spent 15 plus years of my career doing. Um, these last few years have been made really easy because now I get to manage people who do all these great things for other people, right? So, so just so if you ever want to talk hard, hard, hardcore infrastructure, hardcore op stuff, I'm your, I'm your dude, all right? Um, haven't done it for years, so you're, you're probably a lot better versed at it now than I am, but I can definitely go back to the, to the old school days. So, uh, but these are just some of the companies that I've spent many years doing these activities for. So let's jump right into the content, right? Because this is why you're here. You're here to learn about Terraform and Ansible. Uh, by show of hands, how many here think that you have to choose either or of these products? Okay, so then talk is done. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> Y'all made that very, very, very easy for me. Um, so I'm assuming you're here because you have interest in Ansible, you have interest in Terraform, and you want to learn more about what is possibly coming down the road as far as how to make those two things work together. Uh, because quite honestly, it is not an either or, right? You do not need to choose Ansible or Terraform. Um, it is an and, 
right? And, and that's how a lot of things we look at from an Ansible perspective is, is it's an and. Everything can work well with Ansible as far as, 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 far as our opinion, opinion is. You may tell me differently, and if, if you have a different opinion, I would love to hear it. Uh, but the whole idea is, is that Ansible is meant to work well with many different things, Terraform being one of the many things. Um, and one of the newest things that was just launched uh, in November was the fact that there is a certified collection around from Ansible perspective to work with Terraform. Form. And the whole idea around why that's important is, is we wanted to make it as easy as possible to be able to use these two tools together. Uh, many of you may be using Terraform right now to do a lot of your cloud provisioning, which is you know, you know, I've had many conversations with, um, and, and one thing I didn't mention is my background that I did for five years at Red Hat was is I ran a consulting organization for their automation, right? So I ran a consulting organization for Ansible, and I talked to many customers, and they always thought it had to be an or, right? Either it's Ansible or Terraform. And I was like, no, you can absolutely spin up your content on Terraform. Using Terraform, right, spin up your cloud content, um, I mean, cloud uh, resources using Terraform. I said, but then once you got them up, you know, what are you going to do, right? Well, you can use Ansible to do the rest of your orchestration, right? So, but anyway, the whole idea around this collection is to just make that possible, make that easier. Has anyone, show of hands, anyone in the room had a chance to give that a go yet, or, I, or I've had a chance to try that out yet? No? Not yet? Will you when you go home today? No? This week? Next week? All right. The reason why I ask that question is that we want your feedback. We want your feedback as to how well this collection is is helping or making your life easier, right? I've I've received some feedback earlier on when it was launched. Some tweaks were made, um, and definitely want to hear it from you, right? So definitely tell us how how it's how it's working out. Um, it's kind of built up of a two module, uh, two, two different independent modules. The first module is kind of compli it kind of goes along while it's compatible with the current module that was there before the Nova this November release. And then the second module kind of adds some additional functionality. Um, and that, that's, that's basically the gist behind this. And, and we want you to give it a try. And like I said, more importantly is your feedback. Um, we want to make it easy to be able to do things within Ansible as easy as possible. Um, so this is just some more things that kind of comes out of this this uh, new collection that was released, um, uh, and, and we we wanted to call out some things that are kind of out of scope for now. Uh, it's not permanent, but for right now, these are the things that it doesn't do. And I know you may say to yourself, "These are all the things I wanted to do, right?" And and don't worry, uh, we we know that we're calling it out so that we can be transparent with you about what it doesn't do right now, but. It, what we are planning to try to have it done uh, in the future, right? So this is just the first go at it. Uh, by no means is this the uh, end of the line as far as improving this collection, okay? So one of the things that are part of this, this presentation that's really important is that to get everyone thinking about, when you think about hybrid cloud and think about managing a hybrid cloud, the idea that, you know, it's not just about a particular cloud, it's about managing all of your platforms, all of your infrastructure, and doing it in a similar way where you can automate and, and provision in the same way. And so this graphic is just meant to just kind of tease out the fact that it's not just about provisioning, it's not just about day zero, it's about day one, it's about day two, right? It's about compliance, it's about being able to really tie together your workflows, your end-to-end -end workflows, and making it where you can automate as much of that as possible um, and remove those mundane tasks, right? The way I see it is everyone in this room, I would much rather you be doing things that you can move, fo move your company forward and begin to help innovate with your company versus you doing those mundane operator and infrastructure and day-to-day -day things that you have to do. And I know you do them. Um, I re I, I'm, I'm actually very jealous that um, I was in uh, uh, operations during the time when we didn't have the, all the fantastic tools and tool sets that we have now. You know, I used to be able to write a batch file or a command file like nobody's business, and, and I did mention, and I probably didn't mention it, I don't say it too often and don't tell anybody if, uh, that I told you, is that I'm a Windows admin, right? I started out as a Windows admin and then I switched over to a Linux admin. So I, I was a, 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 a schedule task, command, batch file, I used to write them all, I used to do them all, and imagine the days of my job would have been a lot easier if we had Ansible during that time, but anyway, 
putting all that aside. Uh, but I want to tease out the idea that use cases around hybrid cloud is not just talking about public cloud, we're talking about private cloud, we're talking about virtualization, right? You have to look at it holistically and try to figure out what tools can you use that can cover that broad spectrum uh, to really make your life easier. So that's, that's the whole idea around this slide is to just give you a little bit more food for thought, expand out the use cases that you may be having in mind, and knowing that uh, with tools like Ansible in com combination with tools like Terraform, all of that can be accomplished. And again, this is just this this goes even further, right? Um, th the whole idea is is that when you're automating things, you want to use the best tool that works best for that platform or that those resources that you're managing and automating. And so, I wouldn't say to you that you know Ansible can do a better job managing Azure components, right, versus the Azure Resource Manager, right? That that tool was actually created to manage those resources. It's directly connected to it. It knows how to do a lot of the things that Ansible may not be able to do out of the box. And we're saying use those tools, right? Use those tools in conjunction with Ansible. Let Ansible be your central uh, automation platform and then from there be able to use these other automation platforms to be able to do those specific things with those specific resources. And that's the, that's the capability that's been provided around that and that's what we just want to encourage everyone to kind of kind of look at it from that perspective. Um, and, and you know, the, the slide kind of speaks for itself but that's, that's the whole idea. I, anyone here kind of, you know, are you doing anything similar as far as how you're managing your automation, are you using any combinations with Ansible as far as some of these tools like this or anything like that? I would love to hear anybody's feedback. I see a head nodding, all right. So what, you mind me, you know, double clicking into that? Like, what are you kind of doing? Yeah, mostly Terraform to just deploy the infrastructure and then Ansible to provision uh, the concentration of the operating system itself after the, uh, after the provisioning of the resources. Perfect. How's that been working for you? Uh, pretty well. Okay, excellent, excellent. Are you excited about some of these new changes? Uh, I am going to check them out, yeah. All right, okay. I, I'm going to hold you to it. I'll look for you later. <laughs> Don't joke. Anyone else uh, doing any, any uh, combinations of any sort of public cloud automation tools and kind of combining it with uh, Ansible? Oh, is, is, that a, is that a head nod I see going on? All right, what are you doing? I have a uh, uh, events role in the field of AMI. I mean, AMI images, then uh, they get deployed with Terraform, and then the provision application is done again with the uh, <laughs> Cool. No, I mean, I'm, I'm actually very encouraged to hear how this has happened. I, I don't know, many of you were around when, you know, there was the Terraform versus Ansible, well, I don't want to call it a war, but I want to say it was a, it was a, it was a heated discussion, right? And I'm just happy to see how that has kind of changed and, and the things are working well together, so. All righty. So now we're going to talk about it from the other side, right? So we spoke about how Ansible has some collections that uh, were created, uh, new co collections that were created in November. But now we're going to talk about what Terraform is doing, right? So there is going to be a Ansible uh, community Ansible provider for Terraform, right? It's hot off the press. It says February 2023. Um, I don't think it's there yet. I checked it last night. I didn't see it there yet, but the whole plan is for it to be there. And so, the, again, same logic, right? If you're dealing with Ansible, you want to be able to make it easy to integrate and work with Terraform. Now, same thing. If you're dealing with Terraform, we want to make it easy for you to be able to integrate and work with Ansible. And so that's the whole idea around this provider. Um, uh, to me, it... Again, it works the same way as, as, it, as it, uh, the collection did in the sense that it'll be able to give you, you'll be able to coordinate and, and manage inventory that's managed by Ansible, right, directly from inside of uh, uh, Terraform. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, right, it's to encourage those hardcore Terraform folks to be able to kind of take a peek at Ansible and maybe try, start writing some Ansible content and see how that goes for you. So, so do I have any hardcore Terra, Terraform folks in here that are now maybe interested in looking at writing some Ansible content? Yes? No? No, he's shaking his head yes, but he's having a conversation with somebody else. <laughs> Any, anyone here? Nobody wants to admit to being a hardcore, okay, I got a hand. So, okay, nobody, nobody wants to admit to being a hardcore terraformer. I, I mean, I, I won't judge you. You know, I am, you know, partial to Ansible, but, you know, I, I, I love all automation tools at the end of the day. Um, so, you're a hardcore terraformer. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, there's only a specific reason for the job. I usually go for it. 
Okay. 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 All right. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just happy that we're sparking some interest and that we can see some synergies going. Uh, but at the end of the day, and, I, and this is in, within my new role, the first thing I've learned is that I need to constantly remind everyone we want your feedback. We want your feedback. We want to hear how it's working for you. Um, and, and trust and believe your feedback does not go on deaf ears. Uh, it, does, it does go somewhere, and we do try to improve on it and make things better. So that's the goal at the end of the day. Um, so just, just so you're aware, from the community Ansible provider that's going to be going out to Terraform, these are the items that are out of scope. And this may or may not affect many of you. I don't know how many of you are actually using AAP, uh, but that AAP integration is just not going to be there when this thing is first rolled out, but it will come over time. Um, and uh, same thing goes for the support around that. Nothing major there. Okay. So this is some of the future plans. The future plans really are surrounding around being able to do better integration with AAP um, into uh, being able to a integrate AAP into Terraform. Um, and again, I don't know how, show of hands really quick. How many here are using actually AAP, Ansible Automation Platform? I'm sorry, I, I, I hate abbreviations, but unfortunately that Red Hat, if you don't put an abbreviation around it, you can't talk about it. So, um, you know, anyway. How many of you here are, show of hands are using, oh, I saw a hand. Yeah. All right, I see a few hands here. Okay, no worries. Okay, I know this is an open, you know, open source conference, so I don't, I don't want to talk about the commercial things, but um, just wanted to make mention of the fact that um, Ansible Automation Platform is obviously um, is is offset of Ansible, right? The commercial version of it, the one that uh, is more focused on enterprise, right? And again, if you want to talk more about that, feel free to come ping me about it. I don't want to talk about it on a recording because I feel like someone's going to come get me. Um, so <laughs> particularly Carol. Uh, so, um, but yes, the future plans is really around making sure that AAP integrates well into tools like Terraform and many other tools, right? So that's, that's the, what's on the horizon and uh, more to come. So this is just some external resources. If you were interested in kind of digging a little bit, of course, those links do you no good because you don't have my slides. Oh, oh, you can hear me now. So <laughs> I've been talking for the past 25 minutes and no one in the room has heard me. In the back, they couldn't hear you. What the front of Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, got to start from the beginning again. Hold on. No, I'm, I'm kidding. No, I won't do that to you, um, even though I have time to. These links obviously are, are of little use to you through the screen here, so uh, we'll try to figure out a way where we can get these links to you so that you have some resources. Again, the, the GitHub will point you directly to the repository uh, where those collections, the Ansible collections are, and if you're a part of the Ansible community, which I hopefully everyone in this room is at some point, um, you can obviously contribute to that, uh, that repository and um, submit some good things. Uh, there is a self-paced lab, and I, and I want to call that out and again I'll make sure these links are shared where you can actually step through if you've never had experience with Ansible and Terraform or even Terraform and Ansible there is actually a self-paced lab that will kind of walk you through what that experience is like so you can kind of get an idea as to maybe if this tool can solve a problem for you so and that's just one of the many self-paced labs that are out there on Red Hat that we have available for you to kind of give a try so you know definitely worth it right and um, some, some, uh, definitely some blogs out there that kind of you know, answer some questions if you're new to Terraform or if you're new to Ansible, but I don't think anyone in this room is new to either of those. So, um, But we'll make sure we can figure out a way to get you those links. Um, and at this time, that is, that is what I had to share for today. So I would love to open up the floor to anyone who has any questions. I will try to field with some answers as best of my ability. Um, and if not, i uh, give you back some time in your day, but you know, that was it. So I would love to take questions. No, no clapping yet. I want questions first. No, because then you're going to try to leave. No, hold on. <laughs> I know. No. You, gotta, you can't make me look bad. This is my first talk here, so I, I have to make sure. I, um, but I, uh, questions, please. Questions about Ansible Terraform, questions about AAP, questions about Ansible. I'll, take, I'll, fill, I'll try to field them all. Oh, 
All right. Do you maybe have some examples of Terraform provider for Parsable? Like, you know, some code examples? So um, I believe, in, in based off of what I checked last night, because I took a look, there are some. Oh. Repeat the question so people oh. online, the recording can hear. No problem. So the question was, is, is there any examples of the provider um, out there that um, for the uh, Terraform provider for Ansible out there? And to my understanding, based on what I saw last night, I saw a few examples. So someone else, um, there were actually, I think, two other or three other providers out there already in Terraform that, uh, for Ansible that was written by someone. Um, and so those, they, the, there are some examples present there. Um, and when the community one gets out, hopefully we'll, we'll make sure everyone knows. And there should be some examples associated with that, too, the documentation as well. Yes? Terra Grunt. So, are there any plans to integrate this with Terra Grunt? Okay. I don't know. That's a great question, of which we will get you an answer. Yeah. Well, I'll get. I'll do some research and get you an answer for that. Any more questions? So either I did a really good job presenting this information or I did a really bad job where y'all just want to leave really badly. <laughs> Which is it? Good. good. Okay. All right. Fair enough. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here uh, until tomorrow. So, uh, um, you know, pull me aside. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you for your time. Now you can talk. <laughs>